Hey everyone, um, we're about to talk about something called linear defects and dislocations. Um, but before we can do that, I need you to look at your right hand. So please look at your right hand. Um, you know, stare at it for a moment. Here, you know what? I turn on my webcam for this. Okay. So look at your right hand. Curl your fingers of your right hand. Now with what we're about to do, we're going to be doing lots of little like tracing. I'm going to be going around in a circle, or it's more me like a square. But when I do that, you are going to be curling your fingers such that in the end, your fingers, the tips of your fingers, are at this arrowhead. And the base of your hand is right here. So looking at this one I've just drawn, if I try to curve it, my thumb is pointing into the computer screen. If I, however, draw it in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, and I curl it, my thumb is pointing out of the computer screen. So away from it when it's counterclockwise, into the computer screen when it is clockwise. Right hand. Don't forget that. That's going to be helpful. Okay. Just for my face, just figure that you need a visual there. Okay, thanks for listening, and let's get, keep on going. Oop, too far. So, dislocations are one-dimensional defects. We had those point defects, now we have a line. And so, these are one-dimensional defects around which, around is the key word, that's why I was talking about these little cycles, which atoms are misaligned. There are two types, and we're going to see one of those today. Yes, one of those today. There is the edge dislocation. Um, that has a Burgers vector, which we're going to learn about, perpendicular to dislocation line, and a screw dislocation, where the Burgers vector is parallel to the dislocation line. Now, this is going to make sense as we go to the next page. The big thing right here is the Burgers vector is a measure of the lattice distortion. It tells you how much it's been distorted. Now. Let's look at this because just talking about them doesn't make any sense. We're going to talk about the edge dislocation this time, next time, screw dislocation. Okay, here's the Burgers vector, but that doesn't tell you anything until I show you where it comes from. Now, this is an edge dislocation. Let me show that. Okay, too far. Tell me where's on this one. This is an edge dislocation. What you can see is everything's hunky dory for these four rows, but then we get to row number five and we're missing some atoms. Where did they go? They're gone. And because of that, it eventually fixes itself. They're going to come in there and there's no distortion anymore down here. Um, but in this area, you're going to see that there's distortion. Now, that distortion continues into the page or out of the page, depending on what we're looking at. So let's try something out here, why don't we? We're going to try to do a spiral, okay? I'm going to start up here. Now, this is the center of all my issues and pain. So I'm going to start, I'll just start up here. I'm going to go over three atoms. One, two, three. Now I'm going to go down three atoms. One, two, three. Now over three atoms. One, two, three. Now up three atoms. One, two, three. Now if I was in a perfect structure, I should have started at one point and gone all the way around and come back to the exact same point. But we have this edge dislocation, which means that I have a gap. Now, do you see the shape of this gap or the shape of what I just created? Does this look like something to you? It should look like a spiral. Okay, it really should look like a spiral. And I can either say it's going either way. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter which one I'm going to do. Uh, this way or this way would work. Now, this little gap you see right here is the Burgers vector. It's however much you know I would need to push or move to get back to where I started. In this case, I have to move over one atom. One atom to the right to get to where I started. And that means my Burger vector is going to be one to the right. It's not just this particular place. It's anywhere, because I could have started my spiral anywhere. It's just all around this line, I've got a Burgers vector of one um, atom spacing. 
Now, what I said earlier is that this is perpendicular to my dislocation line. That's a little bit harder to see until you remember that right-hand rule. So what all of you are going to do right now is you are going to take your hands, and we have a nice little spiral right here caused by my dislocation line. And I'm going to just say it's going in this direction. Okay, now curve your hand around this. Remember, your pointer finger is where that arrowhead is, and the base of your hand is where the tail is. Now, what direction is your thumb pointing? If you're using your right hand, it should be pointing straight into your computer screen. Okay, so now let's look at it from above. So you told me that you know, here's your computer screen. Here's that burgers vector on your computer screen, that's B. And your thumb was pointing into the computer screen. Now I'll add some like, keys, there you go. Beautiful. Um, and these are going to be at right angles to each other. So this is perpendicular. It works. It shows it's perpendicular. So let's talk about this again. Edge dislocation. It causes this sort of spiraling error because we have an extra half plane of atoms somewhere. Or we're missing a half plane of atoms right here. If you're trying to figure out where that burger's effect, or sorry, where that dislocation line is, it's where I go to the smallest number of steps. So starting like right here above it, I go one over one down, one over, one up, and I've got this little spiral right here. And it's at the center of that error. So it's where your thumb goes. When I start drawing these little spirals and I do my right hand rule, my edge dislocation line is where my thumb goes. The burgers vector is whatever I would need to reconnect my atoms. Like this should have ended up right here, but since it didn't, I have that burgers vector to fill the gap. It's just that extra step to get back to where you started, okay? And sometimes there are combinations of things which we're gonna see next time. But for now, Burgers Vector is what gives us that extra step to get where we started. And for edge dislocation, our dislocation line is perpendicular to our Burgers Vector. Okay, this is one of those reasons we had to learn about all those points and directions. You're going to need those in the future, so make sure that you've really mastered those directions, okay? Master directions. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.